Hi, good afternoon. My name is uh, Ilian, and I'm here to tell you how Android Generic System Images, or GSIs, uh, can help you test your applications on versions of Android that are not officially supported by your phone manufacturer yet. But first, uh, a bit of a background on uh, Project Treble, which makes this possible. When you look at uh, Android from the point of view of an application, you know, there's a bunch of apps that talk to the operating system via stable uh, interfaces. That, that is what we call the SDK API. This is the dotted blue line. And they talk to what we refer to as the Android framework or the Android system image. What we did with Project Treble is we made sure to establish that system image on a stable foundation um, on top of a vendor implementation which is specific to the actual mobile CPU and uh, hardware that runs on your, that your phone has. And uh, that system image and that vendor implementation talk to each other via what we call vendor interfaces. Uh, and these, in both directions, comprise uh, what we call the treble, uh, the treble APIs. Uh, so uh, remember that green uh, box. What does that have to do with generic system images, you might wonder? Well, when we uh, released Android to, when we released Android 10, we pushed a bunch of open sources to the Android Open Source Project, or AOSP. What then happens is silicon manufacturers such as Qualcomm and MediaTek adapt this code base to their uh, CPUs, to their mobile SOC, SOCs, excuse me. And then they turn around and give that code that they've modified to their OEM partners, companies such as Samsung, um, uh, you know, Sony, et cetera, et cetera. There is an inherent lag in this process, which is where the generic system images come in. When we created that pure separation between the system and the vendor part of Android, we made it possible to generate pure binaries out of AOSP that are guaranteed to work on devices that are uh, Project Treble compatible, which is all devices that launched with uh, Oreo and later. So as a developer, what can you do with GSIs? Well, um, you can test your application on the spec version of Android, right? Android is defined by what we publish to AOSP. Of course, it gets modified successively by every uh, partner in the ecosystem, but the canonical version of Android is what runs on AOSP, so you can do that, right? You can further, using GSI, test, test your applications on unreleased versions of Android, our beta releases and quarterly uh, updates and so on. And you can do that on a wide range of actual physical hardware, right? And this is the most important part. Um, to put this uh, sort of on a spectrum, you can see that prior to today, you could test your apps on virtual devices such as the emulator and also Cloud Android, which I'll briefly mention. And then you could test it on physical devices when they got upgraded. Now you have the ability to test it on those physical devices with GSIs uh, while you're waiting for the upgrade to take place. So GSI today is already published uh, for both Pi and Android 10 on AOSP. Um, we uh, build generic system images on ci.android.com for every change that gets uploaded to, to the AOSP master branch. And we have detailed instructions on how to uh, use these GSIs. Uh, we've also tested them on a bunch of devices. We cannot test them on all devices because there's too many of them. But we've tested on a representative sample, and we know they work. If you were at the uh, uh, booth yesterday, you saw them in action. Now. The problem with GSIs is that in order to test them, you have to unlock your device. Not all devices are unlockable. You have to disable verified boot and reflash the system image by your manufacturer with this GSI, thereby destroying it. What we created in Android 10 is called Dynamic System Updates, and they allow you to download that GSI in a dual boot-like setup that does not tamper with your factory ROM. You can download GSIs, boot into them, reboot into them, download several of them, and delete them without touching your Samsung device's data or, or, or factory images. And uh, DSUs are enabled on Pixels 3, 3a, and 4 today, and uh, will be rolling out to participating OEMs. They're not uh, required for Android 10, but they will be probably available on a bunch of devices, Pixels uh, for sure. So GSI releases, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we, we produce GSIs for all beta uh, releases. And then when we push to AOSP, we issue GSIs there as well. And on a quarterly basis thereafter, as we publish security fixes and critical bug fixes. 
Um, that's about it. You can do awesome things with GSIs. And Cloud Android is another virtual device that you can use um, that is available on AOSP. You can Google that, and instructions will come up. And I think that's a wrap for me. Um, GSIs are, the instructions are android.com slash GSI, and DSU is android.com slash DSU. Thank you. <laughs>